The Ultra Ball and I are here to tell you the top 10 cards that you should be picking up when Splite comes out and Power of the Elements in just less than a month, actually. So be sure to get nice and soft and sit back and relax as we talk about the cards you should be picking up for Splite format so you don't have to be sitting there drinking your Sprite while Splite is going to destroy that booty hole with its broken ass boards. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Don't be like, believe it or not, the 90% of people, according to my analytics, that have not smashed the ever-living crap out of that subscribe button. Smash it so that we can get to 800 and eventually 1,000 subscribers. We're only 30 away from 800. Remember when we hit 700? Now we're only 30 away from 800. The grind is real. So smash it so that we can get there. What you doing? Come on. Come on. I'll, I'll be your best friend. I'll be your best friend. And guess what? You even get awesome videos like this and there's another Yu-Gi-Oh! retrospective right around the corner so what you waiting for smash the subscribe button so we can get there i really appreciate all the support so top 10 cards to pick up for splite format i've got them here on my computer screen starting at number one i have uh two cards technically but both gonna be at number 10 we have that for like two slots here this is the first one wing dragon of raw sphere mode and lava golem so i've been playing a lot of splite uh, just learning the ins and outs of the deck, learning the combos and things like that. And usually what the deck will end on is Splite Elf, Gigantic Splite, and Totally Awesome. That's three monsters. So you can just drop a big old shiny golden chicken ball sack on them and they're not going to be able to do anything. Yeah, sure, they may have some sort of backup, maybe a starter in the back row or a Splite Smasher in the back row, but that's not really going to matter when you've broken apart that whole board of three monsters. I've had people Kaiju me, and really, Kaijus don't do much to the deck. You know, if you hit the Splite Elf, okay, that's cute, but now you're playing with a five-card hand, assuming that you didn't hand trap me. I still have the Totally Awesome, which is going to drop you down to four cards in your hand, and then if I have a starter set, that can get me to Carrot, and then obviously I use Totally Awesome to go for Dupe Frog, so really, it ends with four monsters at the start your turn because they're going to bring out the dupe frog during your turn but regardless i'm still going to have negates i'm still going to have plays overall sphere mode is just a better card but lava golem can also hurt it too so don't be afraid to use that in case sphere mode doesn't work for you board breakers are the key to beating splite and if you side deck those in we even saw with jerome adams where he was side decking not only three sphere mode but also three lava golem because he wanted to break boards if you go in prepared for that matchup you will do well it can only play through multiple hand traps if it opens optimally. So coming in at number nine, continuing with the monsters, I have Dino Wrestler Pankertops. Now you're probably wondering, Avery, why would you use Pankertops? It's only a one of. Here's the key with Pankertops. Even if the Splite player uses Totally Awesome and goes for Dupe Frog and you can only attack into that, Okay, cool. Maybe you've got other cards in your hand that you can combo Pankratops with, right? So you can use it to kind of soften up the opponent's board, whether it's Dark Rulers, Droplets, Evenlies, what have you. You can drop out the Pankratops, the 2600 Beat Stick. You can run over the Dupe Frog, use the Effective Tribute to pop a monster if the opponent doesn't have any, any negates left. It's also a quick effect that you can just use to pop off at any time. It's a very good, versatile card. And honestly, I wish it was at more than one because I think we could easily see people side taking two or even three copies of it in order to help beat Splite because it's just a really good all-around card. It covers so much ground and having a 2600 beat stick that can pop on a quick effect, ah, oh, it's just, it's such a good card. There's a reason why some decks don't play it to this day, even at one copy. Next up here, I have Inspector Border. So shout out to all of the stun players here in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. Inspector Border just shuts this deck down. If you go first and you just summon Inspector Border with back row, that can be any meta deck, especially Splite. Splite relies on their monster effects. They need that to get their engine going. If they open up Deep Sea Diva and you've got Inspector Border, well, they're going to be sitting there pooping their pants because this little thing here called their water engine, it ain't going to do a damn thing. As the whale drinks some water. So... It's being able to shut the opponent off, especially when you go first. Inspector Border is just an amazing card to be able to do that. Next up here, continuing on with our monsters, I have Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. Now, Ghost Reaper, I would argue, is one of, if not the best card on this list. 
because it eliminates cards in the opponent's extra deck. So if you don't know what it does, it says if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, quick effect, you can discard this card, reveal one card in your extra deck, then look at your opponent's extra deck. Also banish all cards in their extra deck with the same name as that revealed card. You can only use this affected Ghost Reaper once per turn. That's fine. You, If you play a copy of Totally Awesome or Splite Elf in your extra deck, you can use Ghost Reaper to reveal that monster to hit the Splite Elves or Totally Awesomes that the Splite player is playing. So ideally, you'll probably run something like Splite Elf because it's just generically good. It's something that you can have in your extra deck as a Winter Cherries target, especially if you really don't need your extra deck, then you have the space for that. You can use the Winter Cherries the moment the opponent summons like a Deep Sea Diva or a Splite Monster, and then you just hit their Elves, and now they're really up the shit's creek because they need the elf in order to make the totally awesome usually because typically especially with like deep sea diva if they have like a splite monster in hand then they're going to make halka fibrax halka fibrax get the diva they make the gigantic splite they go for the swap frog to dump the rodent toten then they summon something like splite blue to get jet jet gets either starter or smasher and then they make elf to get the rodent toad and make the toad they can't do that though if they don't have access to it. So unless they open optimally, they really can't get to the Rodent Toten uh, or even to the uh, Totally Awesome and have the Frog engraved to banish off the Rodent Toten without having access to Splay Elf. So it's a really good hit. Next up is another card coming out in Power of the Elements, and that's Artemid Slay. So it's a normal spell card. You send a monster from your extra deck to the grave, target one monster your opponent controls with the same card type, Fusion, Synchro, Exceeds, Pendulum, or Link, and shuffle it into the deck. Your opponent cannot activate monster effects in response to this card's activation. Some Yugi tubers had talked about this card when it first got revealed, but ever since then, the hype has kind of died down around this card. Not a lot of people are still talking about it, and I feel it's sort of been forgotten. You know, if you're playing things like Herald of the Ark Light or really any monsters that are in your extra deck that don't mind going to the graveyard when they're sent from the extra deck to the grave, you can play Artemis Slay. You can use Artemis Slay to dump a Link monster to bounce back Splite Elf to the extra deck. You can dump an Xyz monster to hit the Totally Awesome and bounce that back into the extra deck. You have so many flexible options with Artemis Slay. And even outside of Splite, this card's really good because you can dump something like Herald of the Arclight to bounce like a Baroness to Fleur or a Chang Ying back into the extra deck. It's so, so good. And the fact that monster effects can't respond to it, it forces the opponent to have something besides a monster effect. And Splite revolves around monster effects. You shut off the monster effects, you're going to win the game. Next up here, I have uh, two slots again, and that's Lightning Storm and Evenly Match. And really, this goes for any board breakers. Lightning Storm and Evenly Match are going to be so crucial in Spite format because, yes, the opponent is going to have negates. They're going to have that totally awesome, but they can only get back the totally awesome if you have a monster on your field using Spite Elf's effect. So if you're able to out the totally awesome, you know, whether it's baiting it out with a Raigeki or a Feather Dust or what have you. You can use Lightning Storm or Evenly to clean up the rest of the board. And then they're just left with one monster. Even if they leave themselves with Splite Elf, it's not going to matter because everything else is banished face down. And if the Totally Awesome is not in the grave, then you're just good to go. So I really think that big time board breakers like Raigeki, Lightning Storm, Evenly, all those things are going to be go-to cards. Next up here, I have Triple Tactics Talent. Triple Tactics Talent is just amazing. Like I said, Splite revolves around monster effects, and you can just go talents to suck up one of their monsters, draw two, rip a card out. It's a really amazing card, especially coming into Splites. Anything that revolves around monster effects, or even if they just decide to hand trap you, you can just talents the shit out of them. Next up here uh, is actually uh, the next to last spot here. These are kind of back to back as well, but yet they're also kind of separate. That's Dark Ruler No More and Forbidden Droplet. Dark Ruler No More and Forbidden Droplet, you know what they do. They negate monster effects. Dark Ruler, you slam it down and just break the entire Splite player's board. You got to have these cards going into this format. Even against tier elements, they make a board and you just go Dark Ruler and just shut everything down. It's so damn good. And last but most certainly not least, I have Dimensional Barrier because you can just play it. You can call Exceed and then the opponent's shitting in their pants because now they can't make their gigantic splite. They can't make their toad. They, they can't make anything. You can make the elf. Okay, that's cool. Like you ain't doing nothing with it, pimp. Like it doesn't even matter. So guys, these are my top 10 cards going into splite format. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Is there something I'm missing? I mostly looked at the OCG and saw what it is that they're doing. Um, yeah, 
that this is splite format, y'all. We're, we're getting closer and closer to it each and every day. Remember that the sneak peek premiere is at the end of July, so be prepared for that. And we will be having a case opening of Power of the Elements on the channel. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.